Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. The purpose of this webinar is to give you a prospective uh, student the opportunity to learn and to learn more about what you can expect as McMaster Continuing Education student and for you to ask any questions that you may have. Uh, the webinar will be useful for new students and those who are thinking of uh, registering for your first course with McMaster Continuing Education. My name is Jesus Lopez Aguilera, and I am an information specialist here at Continuing Education. Information specialists are your first point of contact for any general questions or advice assistant with selecting a program or a course and help with creating a study plan if needed. Our agenda today will cover uh, everything you need to know as a new student. We'll talk about the benefits of being a continuing education student at McMaster and provide current updates on studying during the current pandemic. Uh, we will cover eligibility requirements and information you need to know to plan your studies. We understand funding can be a concern for some students, so we'll go over financial aid options applicable to continuing education students. Most of our programs are open enrollment and do not require a formal admission process, uh, but we will explain the difference. Next, we'll do a quick walkthrough of the enrollment process and uh, important next steps to make sure you are prepared for your studies. Finally, we'll go over the resources and supports that are available to you to ensure that you have a successful and rewarding experience in McMaster Continuing Education. For those who are looking for more detailed information about specific program, please note that we have additional program previews specifically for each program that you can watch on our YouTube channel. So first and all, I want to welcome everyone to McMaster community. McMaster Continuing Education focuses on academic credit certificate and diploma programs rather than undergraduate and graduate degree program. We also offer non-credit professional development programs, courses, and workshops. Our academic programs can be used as, as a stepping stone for further undergraduate studies and professional designations. Many of our courses are evaluated for undergraduate level academic credit and almost all our programs can be completed entirely online. Professional development courses tend to be shorter workshops geared toward working professionals. Students value the industry specific expertise of our instructors and the flexibility and convenience of courses offered online and some in person evening weekends, evening, again, when it's safe to do so. Many of you are working professionals with families and other responsibilities, uh, trying to advance your careers while juggling other demands. To accommodate these busy schedules, most programs have multiple start dates each year with online asynchronous courses that allow you to do your courses um, and your coursework when it suits your schedule. Depending on the program, you could earn a credential as quickly as four months or space out your courses and even take um, terms off if needed. Many programs have no time frame in which you must complete your credential. Our selection of academic credit courses are three unit courses delivered at the undergraduate level and will be recorded on an official McMaster transcript. They can be taken for the purpose of academic upgrading, to gain admission to another program, and are eligible for transfer of credit. Our variety of certificate and diploma programs can be a great starting point for anyone 
um, new to post-secondary education and a flexible and accessible alternative to a college diploma. Completed um, certificates or diplomas may be transferred to undergraduate degrees at McMaster and other institutions if you wish to continue your studies afterwards. Most of our programs have been available entirely uh, online um, long before COVID-19. Uh, for these programs, they will continue to operate in the same manner. Our online and online self-study courses are especially uh, designed to ensure a high quality learning experience that is authentic and accessible for all learners. For those of you who are starting the accounting program, all course exams will be administered using an online proctoring service for your exams and can be completely uh, safely done from the comfort of your home. For the programs that are traditionally offered in person, um, please know that we will not be offering any in-person courses for winter 2021 uh, term due to COVID-19. Many of the in-person courses will be offered in a virtual classroom VC format. A virtual classroom uh, format provides students with the opportunity to meet online with the instructor and their peers to attend the live class session during the scheduled day and time listed on the schedule. Future offerings of in-person courses beyond winter 2021 have yet to be determined. Please see the website for more information regarding the course formats. The main eligibility to enroll into a continuing education programs and courses are listed here. A mature student is anyone who's 18 years of age and or who has attended um, secondary school or college on a full-time basis for at least two years or never attend a university. If English is not your first language, please review the language requirement online. Uh, you will see there are exceptions to this policy as well. Example, if you have lived in an English speaking country for the past four years. The vast majority of our programs are open enrollment. This means um, there is no formal application or admissions process. You simply review any specific program prerequisites on the program page. And if you meet these requirements, you can register online. You do not need to submit any documentation. A couple of the health programs we offer, such as health informatics and the professional addiction studies program, require a formal application. For these programs, there are specific admission requirements and an online application is required. You can visit the specific program page online to view the admission requirements and a list of documents that you will need to submit for those programs. If you are planning to register or have already registered for your first course, there are a few factors to consider as you create your study plan. You likely have already chosen a program or course that will match your personal and professional goals. Um, we now recommend you spend some time reviewing the program specific page uh, and pages for guidance about program requirements, uh, course selection, schedules and fees, instructors, and more. Current and past course outlines are available online and are a great way to see what topics are covered in the course, potential assignments, readings, etc. Course outlines may change between the terms but documents provide a good overview of the course and its expectation. Next, you want to consider your availability in terms of having adequate time to devote to your studies. Some considerations are, are you currently full-time or part-time? 
Do you have children, family commitment, or a busy lifestyle outside of work? Do you have a supportive network to assist you while you pursue your educational goals? How many hours do you have each week to commit to the studies? Um, are there certain times of the year that are busier compared to the rest of the year? Um, and how quickly do you want or need to complete your studies? If you are working full-time, we generally do not recommend you to take more than one to two courses uh, at a time. So no more than that. <clears throat> If you have never taken post-secondary education courses previously uh, and you are new to learning, or it has been a long time since you last attended school, then we will suggest starting with just one course. You can always add more courses uh, to your schedule uh, as you go. Uh, if you are working part-time, you could take two to three courses per term. Finally, if you're not working and have full-time availability, you could take three to five courses per term. Information specialists are happy to discuss your specific situation uh, with you and provide you with further guidance. Uh, reviewing the course outline will also help you plan your time as you can see how much time you need to be present with the class live online, along as, uh, with planning time to complete course activities such as reading, studying for quizzes and tests, completing projects and assignments, scheduling an additional three to six hours per week In addition to the specified class time and content hours, it's a good estimate as you plan your availability. When it comes to budgeting and finance, course fees are paid at the time of registration. All fees are posted on the program website, schedule and fees page. Course fees include tuition fee and the McMaster Association part-time student fee for academic credit courses only. If you are an Ontario resident, please note that our program are not eligible for OSAP funding. You will want to budget in mind as you plan your studies, as this could determine how many courses you may register for each term. There are a few programs that have program prerequisites and uh, that you must have before enrolling to a program. You will not need to prove that you have these prerequisites, but it is your own responsibility to ensure that you have the appropriate background in order to be successful in, in your programs. The programs that currently have these types of prerequisites include accounting, digital marketing, data programs, and apply clinical research. Some programs have specific order in which courses may be completed. So it is important um, for you to review the course descriptions to ensure that you're not registering for a course with a listed prerequisite and that you have not completed. Information specialists um, are here to provide you a direction and clarification on any program and course prerequisites if you have any questions. So students are required to pay on a course by course basis at the time of registration. Uh, regrettably, um, for Ontario residents, continuing education programs are not eligible um, for OSAP funding. However, there are a few options students can explore if financial assistance is required. The McMaster Association of Part-Time Students, um, or MAPS, or M-A-P-S, offers a limited number of bursaries for students who can demonstrate financial needs. Students must pay up front for the course and then apply for the bursary through Mosaic Student Center um, during the time frame indicated on the bursary information page. Um, I will tell you more about Mosaic Systems later in this presentation. 
Um, so if you if if the selected um, student for, is selected for the bursary, the funds will be then applied to the student account. This is something you can apply for each uh, term if you are taking uh, two courses or less that term. Um, applications are only open for a short time, uh, a few weeks prior to each new term. Uh, so it is important uh, for you to visit the website if you're interested in this option. Most banks offer student loans and lines of credit to have attractive interest rates and, and require you to pay um, interest only after the completion of your program. These are students' um, lines of credits or student loans um, that you are also able to, to reach out to bank. Um, if you need a letter um, from us, um, you can request one in case you, you're wishing to go through, through a bank loan or line of credit uh, for students. If you are working, uh, many employers offer tuition assistance uh, programs, and you can ask your manager or your HR department if your company offers anything along these lines. For Canadian students interested in government funding or subsidized training options, uh, there's a few options. One of them is Second Career or Canada Ontario Job Grant. Uh, for these, uh, you will need to contact your local employment service center. Unlike many other universities and colleges, uh, courses, McMaster Continuing Education currently charges the same fees for international as we do for domestic students. Completing courses through our department is an affordable and accessible option for international students studying locally or from abroad. Newcomers to Canada needing financial assistance can also visit our website for information on low interest loans available to internationally trained individuals interested in upgrading their skills or starting up a business in Canada. Lastly, it is important to note that fees for academic credit courses are eligible for tax credits on your income tax return. Tax certificates are issued in February for previous calendar years, fees for non-credit professional development courses are not eligible. So I want to take a moment to briefly inform you about uh, the online enrollment process for those preparing to register soon. And for those who have not taken courses with us in, in a while. Continuing education courses are offered three terms per year. So there's the fall, the winter and the spring. Online enrollment for the fall and the winter terms open mid July with yearly schedules being posted on our website around the second week of July. And um, online enrollments for the spring term opens around the middle of March. Uh, fall terms return, um, they run from September to December, the winter term from January to April, and the spring summer term runs from May until August. We do stagger some of our courses uh, start dates, so you may end up taking a course that starts in the middle of a term and runs into the middle of the following term. We recommend using Google Chrome and a computer, rather a mobile for PC registration. Before you enroll, uh, you may want to review the schedule and fees page for um, the program of choice. Once you confirm which course or courses you tend to register uh, for you, um, we'll either pick enroll now at the top of the page um, or click on a specific course to proceed directly to the enrollment page. If you wish to do just a general search for courses, you can click on either future or current students in the top menu bar, click enroll now, and you can either select a program and a program plan, search by keywords, uh, or leave all the fields blank and click go to view all course options for the upcoming terms. 
please know that sometimes uh, if you select too many fields, this may limit your search. So if you're not finding what you need, clear your search and try using a different search option. It is always recommended that students enroll directly on our website and not through Mosaic. Mosaic is McMaster's administrative information system that includes a student portal, which I will inform about you later. As you click on each course to add uh, to your shopping cart, make sure that you re read through all the class notes on the page to determine if there are any course prerequisites or live webinar that you should know about. Once you select your courses or courses for the upcoming term and see the courses in the yellow course selection box, uh, um, you will click at the checkout button, which will take you to a login page. Once you click checkout, you will need um, to be or you will be asked to log in. Uh, that's one of the four options. Um, so you can log in with your Mac ID or you can use your student number. If you're new to McMaster, you can select new to McMaster. Um, and four, if you were previously a McMaster and don't remember anything, or maybe you just applied before in the past to an undergrad program and forgot, and there's also the search match login. If you have or know your Mac ID, uh, you should always use that top um, option. You will only use the search match option if you were specifically prompted by continuing education staff to do so as well. Once you have registered for your courses, you will be emailed a payment receipt immediately followed by an enrollment confirmation email around 11 p.m. If you are new to McMaster and this is your first course, you will also receive an email with instructions on how to activate your Mac ID, including your ID details within a few hours. You will use your Mac ID and password to access all systems uh, you need moving forward. As a continuing education student, what can you do to ensure you are prepared for your studies? To make sure uh, you are fully prepared for your studies, we recommend reviewing um, McMaster uh, websites. Um, there's an option there uh, where you can access. Uh, if you're a new student, it's um, McMaster.cc.ca, uh, and the option will be after enrolling. Um, you, you will go to visit the campus store website and then we need to learn and Mosaic and all that. Mosaic kind of looks like this. Uh, so there's the um, hyperlink on the web on the side there. You can see mosaic.micmaster.ca. Uh, Mosaic pretty much is the, um, where your all administrative um, content is. So you will be able to access your grades through there. Um, if you need to request a letter, you can also request letters from there. Um, if you need to drop a course, it will be also be done through Mosaic. Um, your tax certificates, uh, once tax season is there, will be uploaded there. Uh, so pretty much anything admin um, will be in Mosaic. I would need to learn. Um, some people know it as A2L as well. Um, it's uh, the McMaster's learning management system for online and virtual courses. Students gain access to their course in Avenue to Learn one to three calendar days before the course begins and sometimes on the day of the course um, start date. Um, this is another reason why it is important to register early so that you're not delayed when trying to get access to your course on time. Please note that courses are removed from Avenue to Learn after courses are completed. So if you will want to download any documents that you want to keep for future use or reference, please do so. Some other systems that you may or may not use um, in your course include WebEx or Zoom, 
uh, for live sessions, if applicable. And Microsoft 365, which allows you to use communication apps called Teams. Um, you will be provided instructions for the assistance if needed when your course begins. Um, I want to take a minute to discuss some online learning strategies with you to support you and your online studies. There are a number of myths related to online learning. One misconception is that online learning is easy. Novice online learners are likely to get overwhelmed when starting an online course due to a connective overload from adjusting to text heavy discussions, technology issues, and a greater time commitment compared to traditional courses. Online learning takes time and takes effort and dedication. That being said, don't be intimidated if you have never taken an online course. Uh, we see many students come through who have been out of school for years or have never taken an online course. If this sounds like you, we know you can be successful and there will be many others in the same boat. Uh, staff and instructors are here to support you and answer your questions. We do have a different uh, course formats, um, but for the sake of time, I would recommend that you review the course formats um, link on the specific page of your program of interest for full details on what can you expect for the course formats that are available for that program. Although we're not offering in-person courses for the time being, it is important to know that our in-person courses still utilizes the online learning management systems um, avenue to learn. Uh, so it is important to consider online learning strategies, even if you intend to take in-person courses uh, when they are offered. Uh, for all courses formats, I recommend reviewing those um, avenue to learn tutorials on our YouTube channel to become familiar um, with the system. Um, another recommendation will be to understand your course requirements. Read your course outline uh, from the start to finish to ensure that you have full understanding of what is required of you each week and when assignments are due. It is helpful to mark assignment deadline dates on a calendar to keep track of assignments, uh, specifically if you are taking more than one course at a time. For time management, Online courses still require one to schedule their time for weekly activities and discussions and to plan ahead to ensure that you're able to submit assignments on time. All continuing education students are mature learners and you will be accountable for keeping track of your work. Make sure uh, to plan your course load based on your availability do not take on more than you can handle as you may risk losing money on our course and if you needed to, to drop in course. Um, information specialists can assist with uh, study planning if you need that as well. Um, set up a study space. Uh, pick a quiet place to study with minimal distractions, home, like a home office or in your bedroom. Um, so divided attention could lead to poor recall and knowledge transfer. Most communications will be through text-based discussions and in, in online asynchronous courses. Make your comments and post clear, concise, professional, and respectful. Some additional tips is to um, have a reliable computer, an internet connection, minimum um, half Word and Excel. And then there's also LinkedIn learning for free. Um, and so computer courses, once you become a student available as well. Once your course begins, uh, your first point of contact for assistance with your course will be your instructor. Uh, they can be reached through Avenue to Learn. If you're having any difficulty with your Mac ID login, please visit our Mac ID help page um, 
by clicking on the current students page uh, on our website menu bar. If it's uh, your course start date and you do not see it on Avenue to Learn, for example, please contact an information specialist at Continuing Education and we will ensure that the program department adds you to your course on the learning management system. If you are experiencing um, other technical difficulties with Avenue to Learn, um, you will find a contact information for Avenue to Learn uh, support desk on the Avenue to Learn login page. Lastly, for any other questions or assistance, please feel free to reach Continuing Education Information Specialist, as we are happy to be your first point of contact to provide you with um, direct assistance or direct you to the most appropriate uh, staff member or department. All right, so thank you everybody for uh, joining us today. I hope you learned lots. Um, again, there's a lot of information to retain. This um, will be recorded and it will be posted on our YouTube page. So if you want to rewatch um, again more calmly, um, and then if you have any other questions on our website, use the contact button to send questions um, or any concerns that you have. Um, so yeah, my name again is Jesus Lopez Aguilera. Thank you so much for joining today. And I wish you all a uh, happy new year and, uh, and a safe one as well. Stay healthy and uh, good luck with your courses and have fun. Enjoy them. Thank you.